Today's lesson is called Fire Destroys Brazil's National Museum. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I am Roger, and we're beginning the year with a tragic story that happened last year. Hopefully in this year, 2019, we won't hear stories like this one again. But unfortunately, back in September, there was a big fire in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, at the National Museum there, there was a big fire, and pretty much the entire museum was destroyed. Yes, I heard about this. This is terrible. Usually museums are places where fires, they just can't happen. People are always watching out. Okay, they're being super careful and stuff like that, but sadly... It did happen there. A big fire broke out and destroyed a lot of the stuff in Brazil's National Museum. There were a lot of artifacts that are completely irreplaceable that were totally destroyed and ruined by this fire. And that's very, very sad. Hopefully all of us will take the precautions in the future to make sure that this type of thing never happens ever again. Fires should never happen ever break out in museums. So do what you have to do. Install the right type of fire sprinkling systems and stuff like that. Put fire extinguishers everywhere that you can. Do whatever you can to make sure that a fire never again destroys a national museum. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Fire destroys Brazil's National Museum. A huge fire gutted Brazil's famous National Museum in Rio de Janeiro in early September of last year, destroying nearly 20 million historical items. They included artwork, ancient masks, and the oldest human remains ever found in the Americas. The exact cause of the blaze was not known. No serious injuries were reported, but the country was shaken by the inferno. Some 200 years of work, research, and knowledge went up in flames. Many of the employees present cried as they watched flames engulf the museum. 大家好，第一部分我们看到的单词是名词 remains， 指遗骸或遗体，大部分使用复数形。例如 ，Many tourists visit the area each year to see the remains of the castle. 每年有许多观光客造访这个地区来看城堡的遗迹。另外，这个字如果去掉字尾的 s， remain 则为动词，指保持、持续或仍然。所以可以说 ，The television show remains popular among young people even after running for over 20 years. 这个电视节目在播出超过二十年后，依然维持备受年轻人欢迎的地位。再来，我们看到片语。Go up in flames or smoke, 代表付之一炬，化为乌有。举例来说 ，The entire building went up in flames after a fire broke out in the basement. 那栋建筑在地下室爆发火灾之后烧得精光。Okay, so we're talking about a fire that destroyed the National Museum. In Brazil, they had a successful World Cup a couple of years ago. Even though their team got destroyed by Germany in one game, but still, Brazil is a pretty cool nation. They also hosted the Olympics, and in this particular case, though they suffered a tragedy, their national museum was destroyed by a fire. Now, here in the first paragraph, it says a huge fire gutted. Brazil's famous National Museum in Rio de Janeiro in early September of last year, destroying nearly 20 million historical items. Wait, wait, did you just say 20 million? Is that a typo? Nope, 20 million historical items. That is indeed a lot. It's a great loss. That's a huge loss. I knew that some things had been destroyed in this fire. Maybe dozens of irreplaceable artifacts. I had. Had no idea that 20 million historical items had been totally destroyed. That is unbelievably sad. Anyways, before we move on, let's talk about the verb "gut." 
It says here that a huge fire gutted this museum. Now, if something is gutted, it is ruined. It is destroyed on the inside. Yes, to gut something is to ruin or destroy the interior of something. Now, you can also gut an animal, let's say. Gut a fish or gut a deer after you've gone fishing or hunting. If you gut something, you remove its guts, okay? You take the inside of that animal and you remove it. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're saying that the inside of this museum was totally ruined and destroyed by this fire. This is the verb form to gut, as you said, to destroy something with a fire or to remove the belly or the inside of a fish or something, but it could also be a noun, gut singular or guts plural, like, boy, you've got a lot of guts coming here after I told you to never come here again. Boy, you've got a lot of guts. And also, gut could also refer to someone's stomach. Boy, Jim Applegate has a big gut. He needs to go on a diet. But in any case here, we're using the verb form here. The fire destroyed this famous museum in Brazil. And I can't think of the word gut being used in any other place besides a fire. You can't say the earthquake gutted the building. That sounds silly to me. It's usually a fire. There you go. If the earthquake hits the building, the whole building falls down. The inside of that building won't get ruined. That would just be weird. Anyways, more on fires. Fires and historical items do not mix. And this fire destroyed 20 million historical items. How terrible. Yes, they, these destroyed historical items included artwork, ancient masks, and the oldest human remains ever found in the Americas. And yes, none of these things can be replaced. They're gone and gone forever. Right, and that includes, of course, the oldest human remains. Remains here as a plural noun just means body parts that are left after someone has died. So they found some kind of skeleton somewhere in North and South America. That's what we refer to as the Americas. Anything in the Western Hemisphere is referred to as the Americas. And the exact cause of the blaze was not known. Blaze here is just simply another word for fire. A large, nasty, ferocious fire. Yeah, if you went camping, you would light a fire and you might cook some hot dogs, maybe roast some marshmallows later on. You would never call that fire at your campsite there a blaze. Okay, a blaze is a big, ferocious fire. Like, there are wildfires sometimes in California. Yes, sometimes these blazes destroy huge swaths of forests there in California. And by the way, we're using the word blaze as a noun in this case, but you can also use this word blaze as a verb. Yes, if a fire is burning brightly and strongly and might even be destroying stuff, that fire is blazing. Indeed. Now, let's move on to the next paragraph here. It says, no serious injuries were reported, so nobody really got hurt, but the country was shaken by the inferno. Inferno is referring to that big fire at the museum in Brazil. Yes, this fire, this blaze, this inferno got started and when it was done, it had destroyed 20 million historical items. I know I keep saying that, but that is a staggeringly high number. Yes, some 200 years of work, research, and knowledge went up in flames. Literally. Yes, usually when we use this phrase to go up in flames, we're not being literal. Okay, if something goes up in flames... It's destroyed. It's ruined. It goes nowhere. But here, something did go up in flames, literally. These historical items, this work, this research, all of this knowledge really did go up in flames. It burned. It was reduced to ashes and smoke. It was destroyed by the flames of this fire. Yep, you can say went up in smoke or went up in flames. Boy, that reminds me of an old ACDC song, Shot Down in Flames. That happened sometimes in war. The plane was shot down in flames. It was on fire after it was shot down. Now, 
Now, many of the employees present at the fire cried as they watched flames engulf the museum. They felt totally helpless. There's nothing we can do. Everything is being destroyed in this fire. We are crying, and we feel totally helpless. Oh, we feel helpless. We feel terrible. Yes, there goes this museum. Our careers are going up in flames as we speak. Poor people. Anyways, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. While the building, once home to the Portuguese royal family, was damaged beyond repair, moves were rapidly made to preserve the memory of the lost artifacts. Museum studies students in Rio de Janeiro started collecting images and video, even including selfies taken by visitors to the museum. Within several days, they received more than 14,000 replies. Wikipedia also began an online museum of sorts, along with a plea to the public for photos. It quickly received thousands of images. Second part, we see the verb preserve, have preserved, maintain, or preserve. For example, Kelly chronicled her mother's favorite recipes to preserve them for future generations. Kelly 把她母亲最喜爱的食谱记录下来，保存给未来子孙。或者说 ，the city preserved some of the older neighborhoods from the development. 该市在开发过程中保存了一些较老的社区。接着，我们看到名词 artifact， 指人工制品或手工艺品。例如 ，Lisa liked to make artifacts in her spare time. Lisa 喜欢在她的休闲时间制作手工艺品。再来，我们看到片语 along with， 代表连同，还有。举例来说。Our house was flooded along with all the other houses in the neighborhood. 我们的房子连同邻近地区的其他所有房子都淹水了。而 along with 还可以指除了点点点之外，意思与 in addition to 相同。所以可以说 along with medical equipment, the truck was also carrying high-end computers. 除了医疗器材外，这辆货车也载了高档电脑。另外，补充其他使用 along 的片语。可以用 get along with 来代表与点点点和睦相处，像是 siblings who don't get along with each other when they're younger may become very close at an older age. 年轻时处不来的手足，长大后可能会变得很亲近。最后，我们看到单字 plea， 这个字是个名词，指请求。例如 ，the judge listened to the woman's plea, but she was still found guilty of the crime. 法官聆听那位女士的答辩，但最终她还是被判定有罪。另外，补充与 plea 相关的片语，常使用 a plea to somebody for something， 表示向某人请求某事物。我们可以说 ，May made a plea to his husband for bringing her to a romantic dinner at her birthday. May 向她先生请求，在她生日时带她去吃一顿浪漫的晚餐。Let's continue with the next part of our lesson. It says, while the building, once home to the Portuguese royal family, was damaged beyond repair, moves were rapidly made to preserve the memory of the lost. Artifacts. So here, while it is true that the building was once home to the Portuguese royal family, and it is true that the building was damaged beyond repair, they simply cannot fix it. It is gone for good. But、uh, this building used to be home to the Portuguese. Royal family, of course. As you know, Brazil used to be a colony of Portugal. They don't speak Spanish in Brazil. They speak Portuguese, Portuguese. And of course, the royal family were living there, and this building was totally destroyed. They can't fix it, but. They were trying to make some moves rapidly or quickly to preserve the memory of those lost artifacts. They can't bring those artifacts back, but they can bring back the memories, and they want to keep them and have them last forever. That's what. 
to preserve means. They want to preserve the memory to keep it forever. There you go. If you preserve something, you keep that thing the way it is, or you maintain that thing. You don't let that thing fade away, or to fall apart, or to be lost in any way, shape, or form. Yes, you kind of keep something in good working order, or you make sure that something stays in some original condition. Now. That does not mean that you can bring the artifacts back. They're definitely lost, but hey, you can keep that memory safe and sound. You can preserve that memory. More on that after this example sentence. You could say something like, "We must fight to preserve the Union." So there, during the Civil War in the United States, people in the North would say that we must preserve the Union. We don't want the Union. To fall apart. Anyways, it says here that these moves were rapidly made to preserve the memory of these lost artifacts. Get this: museum studies students in Rio de Janeiro started collecting images and video, even including selfies taken by visitors to the museum. And yes, these images, these videos, they'll contain. Images of these lost artifacts, and by keeping these all in one place, keeping them、um, safe and sound, we'll be able to preserve the memory of these lost artifacts. Right. These are students who are studying museum studies. I guess that's a field of study in a university. So they. Made their own contribution by collecting these pictures, digital images, selfies, video, etc., and they're going to keep it in one place. Maybe spread it out into different hard drives so those memories don't get destroyed. And within several days, they received more than fourteen thousand replies. So they probably sent out some messages on the internet saying, "Hey." If you have any images of the museum, any pictures you've taken of the artwork or of the artifacts, please send us a copy of that. And lots of people did reply. They received fourteen thousand replies in several days. So yeah, that was a pretty quick response, especially from the good people of Brazil and from people all over the world. There you go. Speaking of all over the world, yes, within several days. These students got tons of replies, but then an international website that has translations in pretty much every language on planet Earth they jumped into the fray as well. Yes, Wikipedia also began an online museum of sorts, along with a plea to the public for photos. So yes, these students sent out requests, and Wikipedia did too. And I think this is probably going to be a very good thing to preserve, or in helping to preserve the memory of these lost artifacts. After all, Wikipedia is huge. So yes, Wikipedia began an online museum of sorts, along with something else. So here we've got this phrase, along with. It means together. It means. In addition to, so they did this and this as well. That's right, and there was a plea there. Of course, they were just requesting the public provide them with some photos. That's what a plea is. It's kind of when you're begging someone to do something for you or to give you something. And it quickly received thousands of images. So all is not lost. At least we still have some memories of the museum. People will try to remember those artifacts forever and ever. Okay. Okay, let's move on now to the third and final part of our lesson. We're going to listen to it first. Among the artifacts thought to be lost was one of the museum's most famous, Luzia, the skull and bones of a woman who died more than eleven thousand years ago. Okay, folks, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Among the artifacts thought to be lost. Was one of the museum's most famous, Luzia, the skull and bones of a woman who died more than eleven thousand years ago. Wow. Anyways, before we move on and wrap things up, let's talk about the final vocabulary word of the day: the word skull. Okay. The word skull refers to the bones that enclose your brain. 
Okay, all vertebrates apparently have skulls. They have those big bones that hold their brains or contain their brains. Anyways, your skull, it's kind of like the skeleton for your head. That's pretty much all there is to it. Right, so it included the skull and the bones of this woman who died a really long time ago, eleven thousand years ago. That is a loss to archaeology, to anthropology, but at least we have the memories of that person. Someone at least took some pictures of those bones, and the files are stored somewhere in a hard drive. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hey, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。去年九月啊，巴西里约热内卢这个国家博物馆发生严重火灾，将近两千万件的珍贵历史文物都被摧毁了。那不只是巴西人，世界各地的人都感到非常惋惜。我们读到课文的最后一句 ：Among the artifacts thought to be lost was one of the museum's most famous, Luzia, the skull and bones of a woman who died more than eleven thousand years ago. 在被认为已经失去的文物当中。有这间博物馆最著名的露西亚，那是一名死亡超过一万一千年的女人的头骨以及骨头。好，那这个句子呢，它其实是把主词补语移到句首的倒装。当我们句子里面的主词比较长，或者是带有比较长的修饰语的时候，你可以把主词补语移到句首，然后再把 be 动词移到主词的前面，形成倒装。也就是说，原本的句型应该是主词 be 动词，然后主词补语。那倒装之后，句型就变成主词补语加上 be 动词再加主词。像课文句子里面的 Among the artifacts thought to be lost 是主词补语，然后后面它接的 be 动词 was 之后的 one of the museum's most famous 什么什么什么，一直到这个句尾的 eleven thousand years ago 就是它的主词跟修饰语。我们如果把这个主词跟修饰语啊还原到句首，这样看起来就会头重脚轻，然后读者也不容易马上看懂这句话表达的意思。好，那另外补充两个文法重点，第一个是主词。Be thought to 加原形动词，这样的句型可以用来表达一般认为怎么样，一般相信怎么样。例如 ，The painting is thought to be over five hundred years old. 一般认为啊，那幅画有超过五百年的历史了。那我们课文里面的 The artifacts thought to be lost 表示。被认为已经失去的文物，这个 thought 前方就是省略了 which are the artifacts which are thought to be lost。好，那像这样的句型，我们可以也可以用虚主词 it 改写，那它的句型就会是 it is thought 再加上 that 子句。像我们刚刚造的例句就可以说 it is thought that the painting is over five hundred years old。好，接着看第二个文法，重点是课文里面的 Lucia 后面的 the skull and bones of a woman who died more than eleven thousand years ago， 这是同位语，是用来说明 Lucia 是一名死亡超过一万一千年的女人，头骨跟骨头。那我们的同位语呢，通常都会摆在名词或是名词片语的后面来做补充说明。那在句子里面要记得用逗号把这同位语跟句子隔开。例如 ，Mr. Kent, the owner of the store, is a friend of ours. 这间店的老板 Mr. Kent 是我们的一个朋友。那这个例句里面的 the owner of the store 就是同位语，它的前后都要用逗号跟句子隔开。那这是用来对它前方的名词 Mr. Kent 来做补充说明。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Gut. Though fire completely gutted the building 20 years ago, it has been restored and is now grander than ever. Blaze. Firefighters were able to get everyone out of the building before they could get trapped by the blaze. Preserve. The agreement preserved the peace between the two countries for many years after it was signed. Plea. The organization made a plea to the public for supplies. Skull. Babies are born with soft spots on their skulls that usually harden by the time they reach 18 months old. Discussion starter starts now. 
It's our discussion starter now, and here's the question: What can we do to protect historical artifacts from disasters like this one? Well, we can take steps to make sure that a fire never again breaks out at a museum. Okay, and I mentioned some of these things that we could do. During the introduction to our program, we can do things such as installing advanced sprinkler systems in museums. So the moment a fire breaks out, it is nipped in the bud. Those sprinkler systems take that fire out so it can't spread and ruin stuff. Well, we can also take steps to protect items or artifacts from museums. By storing them in different locations, so if there's a fire at one place, at least the other artifacts will be spared. Don't store them all in one place. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you, you next time. time.